One of the most important and remembered event in the life of Muhammad is his marriage to little Aisha when she was just a six-year-old child. Muhammad was 53 years old at that time. This is a point of embarrassment for Muslims of all ages. Let us watch how this strategy of marrying the child bride was part of controlling people to remain in Islam. Welcome friends. If you have not watched the previous episodes of this series, please click on the info card at the top right hand corner to view the playlist. This episode will describe that piece of incident in the life of the Prophet of Islam, which has become the Achilles heel to all those devotees of Muhammad. Yes, friends, we will discuss about the marriage of the Prophet to Aisha the six-year-old child bride. We know that Islam is the religion with the largest number of defectors, and they are silently leaving Islam. One of the primary reason for that is the life of the Prophet of Islam. I know that many Muslims would not agree with me that Islam is the religion with the largest number of defectors. Please watch this video of Mufti Menk, and that should settle the case for you. As much as we say Islam is the fastest growing religion in the globe, because we chase the people away. So when you say people apostate, a lot of the times it's because of us chasing them away. I want to tell you something that I've studied. Mm -hmm. I've studied. Mm -hmm. yes. It's the religion with the large number of defectors, the largest number of defectors. Mm. Did you know that? Mm. I can tell you. That doesn't mean the number of defectors is more than the number of those yeah. who enter. But from all others, those who are leaving Islam, and you don't even know, people are living in your home, and it's second, third generation in, in the Western world, they're not even Muslim. Obsessed, they're not even Muslim. They don't care about Islam, but their name is Muslim, and you think they're Muslim because they're in the situation. I did a little survey of Salah to Eid and I found that 50% of the guys don't even go to Eid. Allah mm. Allah. They don't even go to Eid. Allah. It's sad. And Allah. I'd like you to actually do it here in your part of the world. See what happens. something we can arrange, inshallah. If you, if you have the masajid, check the capacity of the masajid and look at the number of Muslims you have. You're going to mm. find even for Jum'a, you only have a third of the Muslims attending. Mm. I'm talking of the males who are supposed to attend. Mm -hmm. So it's very scary now because Allah. we chase the people away. So when you say people apostate, a lot of the times it's because of us chasing them away. As much as we say Islam is the fastest growing religion in the globe. Now coming back to the most famous marriage of the Prophet of Islam. Let me give you some background and narrate the steps which led to that event. Khadija is dead and Muhammad is dreaming of getting many more wives for himself. When Khadija was alive, Muhammad was scared to even think of that scenario primarily because the power of Khadija was so much overwhelming Muhammad. Moreover, the people of Mecca basically considered Khadija as the head of the family, and Muhammad was just a hen-pecked husband under the control of Khadija. Khadija died three years before his hijra to Medina. While she was on her deathbed, she realized that this husband of hers is a real crackpot. Muhammad told her to greet his other wives when she reaches the paradise, Khadija asked, who are those other wives he had? To which he replied, Maryam the mother of Isa, and Asiya the wife of Pharaoh. Finally, before Khadija left this earth, she got to know what kind of monster she has created by calling him as a prophet of Allah. The life of Muhammad was worse than an immature teenager. There are ample evidence in the Islamic books itself that Muhammad had been going around searching women who could give him some sexual pleasure. In fact, his followers had such a very low expectation of his moral standards that they expected him to be doing sex with some women often. He could not do such things during Khadija's time because he was controlled and wanted to act like a good boy before her. At that time there were very few Muslim ladies in Islam, and in fact none of them were ready to marry Muhammad. That is the reason why he went around looking for some action with other ladies, now that Khadija had died, he also had the additional burden of looking after the kids which were born from Khadija. Therefore his aunt Kaula bint Hakim suggested that he marry Sauda to take care of the kids. Sauda was not very attractive to Muhammad's eyes. Moreover, she was older than him and had a bulky body. 
Muhammad got married to Sauda just because he did not have any other available options. He never really loved Sauda. That is the only reason why Muhammad suddenly divorces Sauda as soon as he get other women as a result of plunders and murder of other men. And when he divorces Sauda, she begs him to keep her and give away her marital bed to Aisha. This is because after a certain age, women need protection more than sex and romance. It was this same Kala who instigated Muhammad to marry Aisha while she was just an infant. One reason for this marriage was his inner fear that Abu Bakr may also desert him sometimes. Till now, Abu Bakr had been a strong supporter of Muhammad. However, there was a strong sense of hopelessness that Abu Bakr could sway away from Muhammad and leave him. This had been the trend since quite some time, when people who joined Islam later on caught cold feet and left the religion of Islam. By marrying Aisha, he knew that the relationship will get cemented, and Abu Bakr will not be able to leave him as he had feared. So when Kala went to Abu Bakr's house to propose for the marriage of Aisha to Muhammad, both Abu Bakr and his wife was in a state of shock. They refused the proposal and asked Kala to go back and tell Muhammad that they are like brothers and there is no such custom of marrying a child of the brother. But Muhammad was in no mood to relent. He sent back message through Kala that they are brothers in religion only. So Muhammad can marry Aisha. This way Abu Bakr was coerced to yield to the will of his prophet and marry off his six-year-old child to this 53-year-old Muhammad. This same event is recorded in few hadiths where Muhammad disregards the objections of Abu Bakr and coerces him to give his daughter in marriage to him. When it comes to such base carnal desires, he is not his brother. In English, this is referred with a P-letter word which all of us know. Seems that he understood his reasons for marriage to Aisha was not even convincing to him. So what do you think he should do so that others around him can be convinced? You guessed it right. He needs to make this carnal desire as a mandate from Allah and thus make this as an official reason. He said to Aisha as follows, You were shown to me twice in my dream. Before I married you, I saw an angel carrying you in a silken piece of cloth, and I said to him, Uncover her, and behold, it was you. I said to myself, If this is from Allah, then it must happen. Then you were shown to me, the angel carrying you in a silken piece of cloth, and I said to him, Uncover her, and behold, it was you. I said to myself, If this is from Allah, then it must happen. Even more surprising to me is why have Muslims stopped thinking? How come Allah is commanding Muhammad to satisfy his carnal desires and not for the general good of all humanity? This marriage of Aisha to Muhammad is the first point on which Islam and Muhammad is ridiculed in modern era. How is it that Allah could not see it? Abu Bakr somehow wanted to save his daughter from the perverted prophet of Islam. Therefore he says that he had already given word to Mutin to get his son Zubair married with Aisha when they grow up. To which Muhammad asked Abu Bakr to go and convey to Mutin that he is breaking his word regarding the marriage of Aisha with Zubair. The pressure of Muhammad was so much on Abu Bakr that he was forced to go and retract the word he gave to Mutin. And then the 53-year-old Muhammad went ahead and married the 6-year-old Aisha when she was of the age of playing with dolls. Aisha was of the age of playing with her friends, who did not even know what is all about marriage. The Tabakat says that Muhammad had given 50 dirhams for the marriage. The little Aisha was forcefully taken away from her friends and married off to the Prophet of Islam. Needless to say this marriage was without her consent. Moreover, there is not even one Hadith which says that Aisha agreed to the marriage with Muhammad. By this we prove that marriages in Islam does not need any official consent of the woman even though they claim that a consent is mandatory. The Tabakat clearly says that Aisha was unaware that she was married off. When she was stopped from going back to her parents' place, she got the jolt that something is amiss. This is an event which is reconfirmed by Islamic history 
and many fatwas arising from Islamic ulemas proving that old men used to marry little girls from the start of Islamic history. In case you are thinking based on these hadiths that Muhammad had sex with Aisha only when she was nine, you need to know this new thing called thighing. Muhammad practiced this with little Aisha from the very first day she was married. This is a process when the male organ is shoved between the thighs of the little girl till he feels relieved by ejaculation. Fatwa, number 41409 dated 7th May 1421 makes it clear that Muhammad had indeed done thighing on little Aisha till she was nine when the marriage was consummated by Muhammad. When you are no more a Muslim who is trying to defend the actions of the Prophet of Islam, you will realize that this Prophet has been abusing little child Aisha all along and his Allah has been promoting this activity. No normal human can accept this action by the Prophet of Islam as anything but gross immorality. This is not only a thing with the Sunnis, even the Shias also accept the thighing technique with underage girls. Ayatollah Khomeini, the former supreme leader of Iran, also had many underage girls for his sexual pleasure. Notice this passage from the Shia online library, approving the horrible practice. It says it is not permissible to have intercourse before completing nine years whether the marriage was permanent or not. As for all other pleasures such as touching with desire, embracing and groping, there is nothing wrong with it even with a female infant. As far as the marriage of Aisha is concerned, Abu Bakr had a good opportunity to expose the Prophet of Islam, but he chose to keep mum and sacrifice his daughter to the perverted ways of Muhammad. A similar thing happened with Muhammad's mirage story where his followers found out that he was lying and a huge number of people left Islam when they understood that he was a fraud. We will discuss about the Mirage incident in another episode. To cover up the embarrassment, Muslims say that Aisha was a mature girl. Sadly for them, we have so many references which clearly says that she was indeed a little girl who was just being a girl her age. While we can go on and on about the mentality of a person who wants to sleep with a six-year-old girl, it's up to the followers of the religion to realize that they have been duped into it and now they are forced to defend all these immoral and perverted practices. I would like to end this video with a challenge to our Muslim friends. The challenge is this. Send me five good things practiced by Muhammad in his lifetime, which any person can follow for a better life. It has to be appealing to the conscience of all humans and should be exclusive to the life of the Prophet. I am reiterating again. These five things should have been practiced by the Prophet of Islam, not just said, but practiced. Go ahead and put those things in the comment section. We have come to the end of this video. If you have liked the content, please do punch the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, don't forget to click on the bell icon that will make sure that you are notified of all our latest videos. Till we meet again, may the good Lord bless you and keep you.